Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is going to be the first in a series of videos. Um, what we're going to be working on is building a new entry um, to my acreage. I've, I've got an acreage with a, uh, had a fence across front. I'm redoing all of that. Um, there's quite a bit of work's actually already been done. Um, I started out by pouring a continuous curb that a lot of the fence will actually all of the fence is going to sit on. There's also some foundations for some columns, um, a gate that we're going to be fabricating, gate opener. Um, there's also some flower bed planters that I've poured some curbs for. Um, but I've got all that done up to this point. Don't really have any video of it. I kind of wish I could backtrack and, and get video of it, but I don't. So we're just going to pick the project up from here. And what we're going to be doing is building quote unquote what I would call an entry structure. Uh, typically you'll see a lot of those around here. There's a lot of acreages, people have a fence and when their driveway comes up they'll do some kind of structure. It's a lot of times brick or stones real popular and it's usually some columns and maybe a panel uh, between the two or a planter, flower bed. A uh, number of things with maybe a wrought iron gate. A lot of people actually have a wrought iron fence. Um, I looked at doing that even if I did all the fabrication myself. We're talking $30,000 plus all the other stuff I'm doing and it's just not in my budget so <laughs> we're not even going to go there. Um, so the majority of the fence is going to be a chain link fence which was much more economical. Uh, there's actually sleeves in the curb that I've already poured that the posts go in and I've, I've made them where if uh, and from experience if someone runs over the fence I can pull the post out without having to saw up this concrete curb with rebar in it. Um, where we're going to start at is building the column frames and uh, there's a panel that goes between two of the columns. All of that's going to be structural steel. It's going to be angle iron and tube steel. We're going to start with that, show the fabrication process of that go th right on through painting it um, and then mounting it on the concrete foundations, um, getting it erected, plumb and square, uh, putting concrete board on it. Uh, matter of fact, the panel is going to have some metal stud work uh, that's infill to support the uh, concrete board because of the spans. We'll go into that a little bit, uh, but once we get the concrete board up, we'll actually um, go into taping the joints, how we do that. Um, we'll also go into the waterproofing, but we'll go over that. It's a waterproofing anti-fracture decoupling membrane, which I'll explain a little bit later. And then eventually what we're going to put on top of it is a Brazilian slate that is a uh, freeze-thaw rated slate on vertical applications. We're in Oklahoma, we get a lot of freeze-thaw, so that's really important. Uh, and it, to find a slate that's rated for that is pretty unusual, but it's from a, a matter of fact, the world's largest tile manufacturer, so I'm pretty sure they'll stand behind their warranty on it. Um, once we get the slate up, we're going to go ahead and put uh, fabricate copper caps out of uh, copper sheet metal. We'll be getting the break and shear out for that. Um, we're also going to be doing a little bit of stained glass work, um, some accents. And I'll show you guys the, the drawing here just in a minute. Um, I've got a CAD drawing that I've printed out. And I did some sketches on it. Um, a few ideas that I may or may not do. I uh, haven't decided yet uh, as far as accents. Um, there's Oh, by the way, there's also going to be some electrical in this deal. You wouldn't think about it, but I've had to account for my Christmas lights that go out there. Um, we're out in the country, so there's going to be lighting at the street so you can see the driveway at night. There's also going to be accent lighting in the flower bed and the planter. Um, it's early summer. Planter's probably not going to get planted until next fall, so it really isn't going to start to look good hope till next spring. Hopefully it'll look good next spring, but um, it's just kind of a, a matter of how much time I've got in budget. So anyhow, that's kind of an overview of the project. Um, I'll show you the CAD drawing of the sketches. Let's see. This is kind of what we're going to end up with at the end of the day. This is our, our gate here. This will be a wrought iron gate. I forgot to mention that. We will be fabricating that also. Um, this is kind of a sunrise design that I came up with. Uh, the design is asymmetrical. There's a large column on one side of the driveway. Uh, you can kind of see this dash line here that dies in here goes across the driveway and then steps up. That's actually some of the grading stuff that I had to take into consideration when doing the design work. Um, 
Here's the two columns that I mentioned with the panel between them. This panel will actually span between the two columns, and the two columns will set on independent footings. Um, there's, you can kind of look at this in plan. Here's the big column, the two small columns, and the panel in between. This is a gate which will actually slide horizontally uh, as opposed to a swing gate. I started out with a swing design and didn't like that so much because of uh, some grading issues and having to redo parts of the driveway that I didn't have in my budget right now. So I, I moved to the sliding gate and I think it will work a lot better anyhow in Oklahoma with the wind. As you can see there's all kinds of sketches on this too by the way and printed out and doodled on it. This is kind of a vertical idea I had for a little accent thing. Uh, probably not doing that. That was kind of a lighting concept. Probably not going to do that. We probably will do something on this column in some stained glass that will be applied and backlit at night. Um, out by the street there is a, where's it at? a column that stands by itself. I want to do the column and then I want to put um, some stained glass in this copper cap. And this will probably be some kind of an arts and craft prairie style. I don't know if you can see it at this scale. But at any rate, it'll be kind of an arts and crafts prairie style stained glass pattern that will light up at night. Um, there's actually a curb that comes off of the front of this column and curves out, creates a planter space right in here. The fence actually come, comes out and then goes off at an angle. So I've got a pretty decent sized planter bed in here. That's an overview of the project. Uh, thanks for tuning in. It's going to be fun. Um, and I guess let's get started and see how it goes. Okay, so I've started pre-cutting a bunch of pieces. Um, put together these shop drawings, which you know, aren't incredibly detailed, but there's enough information on here for me since I actually did the design of the drawing to figure out what I need off of this. Um, see right there, there's four at uh, five foot nine and three quarters. That's uh, four pieces of angle. So, at any rate, I don't have a detailed cut list or shop drawings, but enough info to know what I know, need at what length. Um, here are some of the pieces I've already cut out. Uh, I'm using this new Milwaukee dry cut saw. It uses a carbide blade in lieu of an abrasive blade. Um, I'm going to do a, a separate uh, sort of video on this, kind of a, a review, but uh, so far really great saw. Love it. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is go ahead and take some of these pieces, longer pieces, and I've actually done this to some of them already, and <clears throat> drill our holes for our anchor bolts. These are the bottom plates that go on um, the columns, and you'll see all this stuff come together later and start to make more sense, but I've actually uh, drilled this out. It's a uh, slightly smaller hole than what I'll end up with. Uh, this is kind of a pilot hole, but our final hole will be a 9 16 uh, that allow a half inch anchor bolt. Um, sometimes I actually go to 5 8 but uh, I've got a 9 16 bit, so that's what we're going to use, and hopefully that'll give us enough tolerance to get it over the anchor bolts. Um, and here's kind of our jig setup. This thing works really good as long as you keep all the shavings out of the corner, so that when you put a piece of steel in here, uh, it's nice and tight in the corner. And all it is is a couple pieces of plywood. Actually, this is MDF and two pieces of plywood nailed together at a right angle, um, nice and square. This actually works a little bit better if you have a, a hole here in the corner or basically kind of a, a V in here where the pieces of plywood don't come together. It makes it easier to clean the shavings out of that very corner. But um, anyhow, I didn't do that with this jig. And sometimes you kind of have to blow them out of there and be careful not to get shavings in your eyes. But um, here we go. I'll go ahead and show you sort of the process of uh, drilling each one of these out. It's a piece of 3 8 inch uh, angle, so I do actually put oil on it. It's not cutting oil. It's uh, 30 weight motor oil, but it uh, works pretty good for what we're doing. keeps the bill, uh, bit cool so it doesn't overheat. Okay, we're going to try this again. First time I tried this uh, little video on drilling the actual hole, um, I managed to get this clamp right in front of the work piece so you couldn't see what I was doing. So, anyhow, we'll try this again. As I was saying before, this is a 12 inch delta drill press and I'm not sure what the deal is. I guess it's because everything's made in freaking Taiwan anymore, but um, I'm on my 
second on off switch this one actually went out today it died in the on position fortunately that means I can keep drilling if it died in the off position I guess I'd have to I don't know, pull it out and jump it or something but what that means is in order to drill anything I have to actually plug and unplug the drill at the wall so that's what I'm doing here someone from Delta is listening uh, hopefully you guys can sort that out with some better switches these switches suck but first thing I do is make a little divot here in the metal uh, you notice it's a pretty dry cut put a little bit of oil on it now we start getting some nice shavings you can start to see the uh, oil burning up as it's cutting keeping the blade cool um, you notice enough oil on it to uh, keep the bit cool and lubricate it and to do that the last one time I mean this is going through a three inch piece of steel as you can see pretty quickly um, one negative of the drill presses is the uh, big mess but I keep one of these little chip brushes around and they actually do a pretty good job at kind of cleaning the metal shavings off end up with a big mess on the floor and on the countertop, but I'll clean that up at the end of the day.